Good evening, it's Monday night, it's 7.30, this is Leicester Fan TV, my name is Phil and yes, there's still no football on, but here at Leicester Fan TV we've been working harder than ever to bring you some fun and some entertainment and we are streaming live tonight on Facebook on the Facebook group, on YouTube, Twitter and Periscope. And we're delighted to be bringing you the one and only Jamie Lawrence, who used to play for Leicester City way back again, but similar era to Julian Watts, who came on last season in 1995 to 1997. So what we want is your questions, your views, your comments to Jamie. You can ask him directly anything you want to ask about. Nothing's off limits tonight um, in your weekly fun zone show. So join us now, get your comments in and let us know what you want to ask Jamie Lawrence. Yeah, good evening to you. Let's get a few hellos in there. Good evening. It's Auntie Karen Kennel. How are you, Auntie Karen? Hope you're well. Uh, get your views in, Karen. Do you remember Jamie Lawrence? What would you like to ask him tonight? Matty Bond is watching. Good evening, Matty. Get your question in, Matty. What do you want to ask Jamie? Uh, I'm going to be joined by other Jamie as well. We're going to have fun tonight. We've got two Jamies on. We've got Fox's Arms Jamie and we've got, I'm going to call him Lester Jamie, but that's Jamie Lawrence. So get your questions in, Matty and Daniel Harrison as well. Watching. Get your views in, get your comments in. I want to know what you want. Uh, Chappers says, can't join tonight. Never mind, Chappers, next time. Thursday, just to let you know before we get stuck into tonight, Thursday, we should have as well Ewan Roberts joining us. So we've got ex Leicester players coming out everywhere. Like Julian Watt said last week, they've got nothing better to do, so they'll come and have a chat with us fans. Uh, Ivan is saying... He's in. Uh, he's really missing his football. Let's get his comments up there. He's in Sierra Leone. Hi, Ivan. Thanks for joining us again. I um, hope all the players and missing everybody. He says Scooby Baz is watching. Good to have you, Scooby. Jason Clare, get them in there. Uh, Chappers is saying he'll be with us on Thursday. Good lad, Chappers. Get your questions in, though, Chappers, if you're watching live. Here comes Jamie from the Fox's Arm who set this out. So, Jamie, good evening. Evening all. How are we? I'm fine. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're all well. Set the scene then, Jamie. You've sorted tonight Jamie Lawrence out for us. So, yeah, introduce him. Right. Jamie Lawrence, we uh, we bought him in January of 95 from Doncaster. Old uh, Mark McGee uh, bought him. so And he was here, for, and we bought him for 175000 And he was here for two and a half years. Um, he played 56 games and scored three goals. He wasn't really... Uh, he started off as probably he was in the team, and then he just sort of died off and he became more of a squad member. And then in June 97, uh, we sold him to Bradford. Uh, I don't think we really saw the best out of him, but he had a bit of an up and down year because the first year, the first half year, he got relegated. Then we got promoted back to the Premiership. And then the third year he was here, uh, we got to the cup final. He didn't play the cup final, but he came on as sub in the uh, the replay at Hillsborough in 97. So all in all, he had a bit of an, <laughs> a bit of an up and down time with Leicester. Excellent. Now, we've also got Tom with us as well, Tom. Evening, chaps. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you, yourselves. Yeah, good, good, good. Right. So Tom's with us. Jamie's with us. Let's add in our very special guest. It is Jamie Lawrence. Jamie, how are you? I'm not too bad. How are you? Like? Good, Jamie. How are you coping at the moment with being locked down? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm used to this, aren't I? <laughs> well, I was locked, locked away for about three years and months. So I'm used to this. <laughs> but slightly smaller. <laughs> so, questions, questions. Where do we start? Jamie, J it's Jamie Foxes, have you got a question for Jamie? Right. I'll start off with the, the, the big one. I've been, sent in, I've been sent in a question for you from one of your old teammates, Mr. Julian Watts, that we had on last week. And he says, all he said it. to me was, oh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Anybody can hear you, me? Jamie, can you, you hear Jamie? I can hear you. Can't hear Jamie. That's the only one I can't hear. Oh, oh. let's, Jamie, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to log out and come back in. That's not, that's yeah, Jamie okay. Fox's arms. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. no problems. All right, if you do that, James, our Jamie is going to log out and I will pop on yeah. some comments from uh, 
questions for you yeah. while Jamie joins in. Um, yeah, Keith is saying we need we need a system to dis distinguish between the two Jamies. We certainly do. Um, uh, Daniel says good evening to you. Uh, Daniel, uh, Jamie, let's start with a question here. What what drove you to join Leicester back in 1995? What 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 brought um, you into Leicester? I was at it was, I think it was 1994. No, was it 95? Yeah, 95. Well, I was at Doncaster. We was League Two at the time. I'd only been there ten months. Um, then my agent rung me when I was in London. I was on London seeing a couple of my my friends and family, and he said, um, "Leicester want to sign you." So we drove up the next day. Um, weren't even a question of money, what I was getting or whatever. Like the feel of the club, like like the manager at the time. He said I was a big part of the club, and then I loved it there. Yeah, so you were initially straight away. You were impressed by, I mean, Doncaster at the moment. Doncaster's ground now is really something quite special, especially for a lower league club. Yeah. But at the time, it's a race course ground, wasn't it? Or, or, it was right, right near the race course it was, and it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible back then. Can, can you hear me? me? Yeah, I can yeah, hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Jamie, what did you think? Because it was Filbert Street, obviously, you played at for Leicester. Yeah, well, obviously, you're coming from Doncaster, so massive step up for one. And then the stadium, walking around the stadium and all that, it blew me away. It, at that time, I think it was getting 5,000 for reserve games as well. Family yep. fun night, I think it was. Yeah. Yep. The, fa the family night football, yeah, there was get it was like you say, there was getting five or six thousand up to there was one game where they had 17,000 Jamie for those nights. Well, so, it, well, we, we got about three thousand at Doncaster, so playing in the reserves, yeah, there's more friends there. Uh, I've got a question for you. We'll get Jamie's question in in a minute from Julian Watts. Yeah. Chappers asks you, Jamie, who do you actually support yourself? Uh, I'm a Liverpool fan. Um, Liverpool fans. Yeah, Bradford's close to my heart now, though. Um, I was there a long time, so I've got affiliation to Bradford as well now. So, but I'm a Liverpool fan. I've been a Liverpool fan um, since I was about six. And what do you think, Jamie, on, on, the, on the current situation, obviously, with the league? Could happen that Liverpool, if we don't finish <coughs> this season off... Um, yeah. Liverpool could be denied, which I think would be unfair. Do you, do you feel like this season uh, needs to be finished? Listen, morally, it has to be finished, right? It's better to um, scrap a season what ain't even started than a season was 70% 70, 70, 70 through. So they've got to finish finish the season no matter how long it takes. I think, I think Jamie, oh, that's, I certainly agree with you 100% on that. Is yeah. I'd rather sacrifice yeah. next season but finish this yeah, season I'm off. Sure. Yeah, 100%. It's morally, is correct anyway as well. And they stand to lose a lot of money if, if it's um, cancelled as well this season. So I, I, think, I think they get it done. And I don't know what they do. I mean, teams like Leicester, obviously, Leicester are, are currently and hopefully going to qualify for the Champions League. If this season was it's wiped like off, it. what would they do it's for like the Champions it. League next season? Would they give the team who finished last season another stab at it? That just doesn't seem fair either. And, and in the Championship... Um, Promotion, relegation as well. It's massive, isn't it? So, like Leeds and who is it, West Brom, even though I can't be loving Leeds for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does anybody love Leeds? Yeah. No. <laughs> 40,000 Leeds like fans. Leeds, right? Yeah, that's it. Um, uh, Jamie from the Fox's Arms. Can we hit? Let's see if Jamie Lawrence can hear can you. Can you hear me again, Jamie? Can you hear me now? No, I can't hear it. No. Can't it. Jamie, if you say right. it, I'll yeah. repeat it. Okay, then. Julian's got me to ask him. Um, ask him about a Christmas match day programme. That's all he said. Just ask him about a Christmas match day programme. All right. Jamie Lawrence, this is your question yeah. from Julian Watts. And he, it's a yeah, short okay. one. He just yeah. says, tell us all about a Christmas match day programme. <laughs> Come on. Uh, uh, <laughs> right. We had to, we had to, it still goes around this picture. This picture's still going around. So um, 
we had to do, dress up in fancy gear, fancy, fancy dress, and in the picture, uh, for some reason, I don't know, I got my knob out, and it was captured <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> oh. uh, it's still doing the rounds. <laughs> was it, it, was, it wasn't, was it an official Christmas photo? Yes, it was. Everyone in the office has got this. It's <laughs> Julian Watts has Julian Watts has just seen that and, repl- and sent a message well, no with a load of smiley it, faces. They, they've looked a little bit closer later down the line, and, <laughs> and it made the match day program. Yeah, was that at Leicester? <laughs> That was at Leicester, yeah. That was at Leicester, <laughs> right? Everybody now, now we want. Do you, do you, well, I don't know what year it was. It was obviously around that ninety four, ninety five, ninety six. It was probably ninety six, ninety seven. Right, so we won. That's the season we won the cup. Yeah, it was. So that would have been like ninety six, Christmas ninety six. We want every Leicester fan who's got a football uh, <laughs> program collection to go and have a look through it after this, <laughs> and we we want to <laughs> we want to get that photo out and and Probably nearly there. To me the other day, yeah. uh, Stephen Payne is asking, "Did you get fined for it, Jamie?" No, never. I might have never find you for things like that. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he liked people with a bit of character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got a question here for you, Jamie. This is from Matty Bond. Matty says, while you were at Leicester, who were you, who did you get on well with? Who was your mates in the squad? Who did you sort of room with and that type of stuff? I room with Emil. Um, we used to go out. I, taught, I, I used to take um, Emil to London, the party scene. But did you? Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, I used to get on with everyone. Like I used to bring Muzzy in sometimes. Got on with Lenny. I got on with Walshy. Walshy, I think, was a big leader for me. Good lad. Great lad. And Gary Parker. I got on with everyone. Claridge. All of them. To be fair, our change room was a really good change room. The only one I never really got on with was Ian Marshall. Really? <laughs> yeah. The mug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Uh, Mark Charles. Like now. <laughs> Mark Charles says he's digging out his programs now as we speak, Jamie. Oh, yeah. So hopefully yeah. we'll get this photo on here before the end of the show. You never know. Perhaps we shouldn't do that. Um, who was the toughest player? Here's another question for you. Guy asks, "Who was the toughest player you ever played against?" Now that doesn't have to be while you played at Leicester. We're just talking about any any tough players yeah. you played against. You know what? I wasn't. Tough players never bothered me. Like people like Dixon, all that never bothered me. Them, if they was like that, it was better for me because I was I was very physical as a right winger. I weren't a normal right winger, so the more they called it on, the better it was for me. Was there a fullback though, Jamie? You you'd play against who you thought, oh yeah, who you think? Yeah. Oh, he's always Tony, Tony Dorigo. When I was at Leicester, gave me the biggest lesson of my career. Was that while he was at Chelsea or somewhere? No, he was at Leeds. I was at Leeds. It was at Leeds. And he gave me the biggest lesson where I had to go back to the drawing board because I thought that I could beat everyone by pace. And then, obviously, I go, went back to the drawing board. I know that you can just cross the ball in front of people. You can come off the line and play up to the front. And I learned about the game because before I, before I started, I was never, ever coached by anyone. It was all raw. Yeah, I've got a, Jamie. I've got another question here for you, Tom. I want to ask, yeah. get you to ask a question in. And Jamie, we're struggling with your audio apparently, but I've got um, a couple of quick questions. Keith says, "Talk us through your goal for Jamaica." Ah, um, again, well, it's World Cup qualifier, and I was I used to play defensive um, centre mid for Jamaica. I don't know what I was doing up there, but the balls come across, took it on my chest, <laughs> and half volley. Half volley left left foot into the bottom corner against Casey Keller actually. Fantastic, okay. Tom. <clears throat> let's bring but you I in. Ended up breaking my arm. <laughs> cool. I ended up breaking my arm in the same game. Oh, wow! Yes, Didn't know that one. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. I actually mentioned this bloke a minute ago. Uh, in your time at Leicester, you played with some good strikers. I can grow grow at watching. Claridge was there. Marshy. Emil Heskey, yeah. was there one player that you really clicked with when you could put the ball into the box and he was there? I mean, I remember the Derby game at home and I think you set up Marsh's volley 
the first one of the yeah. game. He scored a hat. He scored a hat trick that day. Yeah, he scored a hat trick. Uh, first half hat trick. Yeah, but was there one strike you felt that you knew if you put it in the right area that he was going to be there every time? Um, Claridge was very underrated. He would always be in the box, right? And obviously, Marshy was good. He was a good player, even though we never got on. He was a good player. So I knew if you put it in the right areas, they would attack it. And if they never, Martin would go mad anyway. So <laughs> you put it in the areas, they would attack it anyway. The second like like question... Yeah, Mill. Yeah, I was going to say, second yeah, question I was going to say. Yeah, second question, actually, mate. I mean, I remember going to this game at the, uh, it would have been the Walkers back then in 2003, uh, and you played against the, the Brazil. I, I remember the Roberto Carlos strike mate. from outside the area and flying in and thinking, well, I want to play. But for someone, you know, Frank Sinclair played that day, one of your former yeah. teammates, it might have been. And uh, what was the, an experience to play against that Brazil team in the time? Well, you know what? For me, it was a pinnacle of my career because, from especially from where I came from as well, to be playing against the world champions, it's an, I had to pinch myself. Um, but obviously, I quitted myself quite well against them, so it was a proud moment for me. Jamie, Jamie from the Fox's <laughs> Arms, have you got another question, even if I have to relay yeah, it? just... Just ask him about the goal he got knocked out when he scored against Scarborough. And does he really not know that he actually scored when he when he scored it? Okay, I'm Jamie Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other Jamie, who you can't hear. His question <laughs> is: yeah. goal you, that goal you scored against Scarborough, were you really knocked out? Did you really not know what yeah. was going on? Yeah, I never knew nothing. Um, I was, I woke up on the stretcher coming off, and they were taking me off, and I was saying, "No, nah, I don't want to come off." And the, guzz, the gaffer was buzzing <laughs> off me as well. I never even knew I scored, right? That's how bad it was. Yeah. Well, but the gaffer was buzzing. I'm like, why is he making a fuss of me? You don't really make a fuss of people. I mean, so I went in the change room. I said, what's the score? He said, oh, one nil, you scored. Uh, I had to obviously get the, the footage to see my goal. Because I never knew I scored. <laughs> uh, okay. I've got a question for you, Jamie. Uh, what, I, okay, you were at Leicester, and you did. You came on as a sub in the League Cup uh, final replay up at Hillsborough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, we we won that in in extra time. Was that again one a, a high point of your career, winning the League Cup? Oh, listen, um, a lot of footballers better than me had great careers. I've not won nothing. It was massive for me. Massive, like. I was very disappointed at Wembley because I yeah, I was going to say every game. yes, and, you had played for a lot that me. season, hadn't you? What was there a reason? Yeah, I was involved. That, what do you know? What happened? Well, Stuart, um, Scott Taylor come back from injury. He had done his cruise He come back from injury, and we've gone to Wembley. I think yeah, I'm going to be involved. And in the change room, he's told he's named the squad, and I weren't involved. I was I was fuming. I bought night something tickets as well from all my family and friends and whatever. Yeah, I'm fuming. Yeah, I was gutted. I was gutted. Um, uh, last week, Julian Julian Watt said to us. He said one of his biggest low points was <clears throat> I think it was the '96 Leicester playoff final that he wasn't in the the squad even. Um, he told us he no, went '97 straight... Cup final. Phil, was it the '97? I thought it was the '96 playoff. It, no, '97 no, Cup final. Right. The League Cup yeah, as well, so the same one. The same one. Yeah, me and him. Got... Got um, yeah. dropped from the squad. Yeah, I, I went straight up in the bar. And got pissed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Julian I mean, did say. Yeah. I, to be fair, Jamie, the replay wasn't many days after, was it? It was. I think it was the last ever League Cup replay. Yeah, but what happened in between? We played Arsenal in between, and he played like people on the, on the fringes. And I played wing back that day, and I had a really good game. I, um, played well against Winterburn. So the, um, the fight, the replay was that week leading up that week, and then you reinstated me and dropped Scotty. I've got uh, a question here from Lee Shaw, Jamie. He asked you who was your roommate at Leicester, and have you got any any stories you can tell us about rooming? Nah, Emil was my roomie, and at that time Emil was very very quiet. I try. I used to try and lead him astray, you know. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you said earlier you took Emil down to London and showed him into the clubbing scene. Were you, were you a bad influence on him then, Jamie? Well, obviously not because he's done really well. Right? But, <laughs> listen, he done it in moderation. He he weren't like me. I I needed to socialise. I like having a good time. I like to work hard, but I like to socialise. Um, Matty Bond asks you, and he says, in all honesty, here, Jamie, which yeah. club were you happiest at? And uh, obviously, we're Leicester fans, but we know you went on and had a great career at Bradford as well. Listen, listen for me, I love my time at Leicester, but I think any footballer worth his salt wants to play every week. I wasn't yeah. doing that all the time at Leicester. So I went to Bradford, um, obviously got promoted, stayed up. And I had a great career at Bradford. I was like one of the first names on the t -shirt, um, team sheet. I was there six years. And it's massive for me. Like the people took me to their hearts and whatever. So every time I go back, I still go back now. And Jamie, that. Jamie, that was while Bradford were in the Premier League or, or what uh, the top division, wasn't it? So it was big, yeah. big, probably the part of Bradford's best time of their history. Yeah, they've never been in the top league ever before. So always going to be part of history. And even now, like, they don't forget. Because, because I was a grafter. On the pitch, I was a grafter. <coughs> Tom, I'll give you a chance to get a word in. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> out to the team, you know, you play with all those two different players and stuff. For me, at Leicester, is there any of the team you still talk to now? Like, did you still speak to Walshie or Muzzy at the, the time being? Or any of the teammates from back then? Yeah, I speak to I speak to Emil a lot. Muzz now and again. I tell you, I speak. I spoke to him. And I met him in Sweden again. Pontus came up. Pontus. Yeah. Pontus he he gets up. mentioned Without all the time. Him, we don't win that cup, that final because he marked Janino at the game. I speak to I speak to Larry as well. Lee Philpott. I speak to now and again. But I speak to quite a few of the boys. Even um, I speak to Parks, Lenny sometimes. So yeah, I, I try to keep in contact with a lot of the boys. And just you know, sorry, I was just going to say you've gone in, you've gone into coaching now. Is that something that you've always wanted to do when you finish your playing career? That you wanted to get into the coaching side of the football? When, when I was in football, I never saw it coming. I never saw it coming. I finished, I finished playing at um, Brentford, and I never knew what I was going to do. Um, I was struggling, never knew what I was going to do. Then I got educated again. I done my um, personal training, and then um, I opened up the Jamie Lawrence Academy, where I help boys um, who are at the risk of offending, and boys who've got released from football clubs. Um, so it added a purpose for me as well to get up every morning, and I made a lot of players go into the leagues and that, and then. I've, I coach professional players every summer and off season as well. In season, I've, I've trained a lot of players like Ruben Loftus Cheek and players like that. Jamie, so do, you, that. do you think yeah. talking? I mean, you're picking up with players there. So, some of some lads who got into trouble, but I'm more I'm, I'm sort of interested in the fact that you're saying players who've maybe been let go by academies and clubs. Do you think that a lot of, especially championship clubs, but even up to the Premier League, overlook these? you know, British talent or pe talent from this area of just people who've missed the boat a little bit. I mean, we know with Jamie yeah. Vardy, for example, these players are out yeah. there. They just need a chance. Yeah, they do need a chance. But I'm not a great lover of a lot of academies, you know, because I don't think they teach them the right things nowadays. They don't teach them about life in general and about working hard. Like back in the day, you would have to clean your boots. That's uh, clean boots, clean change rooms. That's life skills. They don't do nothing no more. So when they finish, if they don't get their um, prof professional contract, they don't know how to live. They've been sold a dream all these years and then it's taken away from them and they, don't, they ain't got a clue how to live. And that's why I feel sorry for a lot of them. That's why I've done what I've done and I've changed the mindsets of a lot of them because a lot of them are soft. Let's Jamie from the Foxes, let's see if I can repeat one of your questions. The next, the next one is I've got for him is does he when he played his second game for Leicester was that the wettest game he's ever played in? It was against Man City at Main Road. All right, so Jamie. Remembers it. Ja right, Jamie. Here's my question for you from the other Jamie. Uh, he says 
do you remember the second game you ever played for Leicester, which was away at Main Road against Man City, the wettest game yeah. you've ever played? Yeah, yeah. I remember it like it's yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I see it on the telly the other day, but um, yeah, made my debut. Pod, puddle, no, second game, puddles everywhere. I actually ended up setting up the goal for Mark Robbins to score the winner. And I actually had a good game that day. But it was under Mark McGee. Yeah, just Jamie, on Leicester managers, was it just Mark? Which managers were you at under at Leicester? Ma Martin O'Neill, obviously, and Mark McGee. Is that right? Yeah, Mark McGee signed me. Right. What did you think Mark when Mark McGee, McGee left, Jamie? I was... <laughs> Being honest, I yeah, was, be honest. I was, I, I was on, I was happy. Yeah? Oh, go on. Because <laughs> <laughs> from a fan's point of view, Jamie, we were fuming when he left, but you were yeah, happy. But it turned out, it turned out really well for everyone involved. Because Martin, Martin O'Neill for me, best manager by a mile. Like, was, just man was he management. A was he a character, Martin O'Neill? We often hear he was quite hands-off with the players, but it, he was either put his arm around you or gave you a bit of a carrot or a stick. How was he with you? You have I, both. No, listen, um, at the beginning when he came in, I, I never knew how to act as a professional footballer. Right? So I was I was out all the time. I was, driving, I was living in London. I was driving from London to Leicester, training and going back home. And he weren't too happy. And then... He was the person who gave me the biggest dressing down of my career. It was in pre-season. Made me travel with the youth team, the reserve <laughs> team, and the first team. I never had no days off. But because I shut my mouth and got on with it, he never held grudges. I was in the team all year round. That's the season we won the league, um, won the league Cup. He never held grudges. And at the end, when I, my contract was up, he took me out for dinner and said, like, I can't guarantee your first team football, but I want you to sign. And these yeah. clubs have been in for you. And uh, I said, Gaffer, I need to go. I need to find myself. And he hugged me and said, listen, I love you. And I, that was it. So he helped, you, he helped you move on, obviously, to Bradford. And, and that worked out really well for you as a player. Um, yeah. A couple of quick questions here from the fans watching. We've got one from Andrew Scheiber, who says, who was the biggest joker in the Leicester dressing room? Jamie. Parks. Parks, yeah. Parks was always up to mischief. <laughs> and, and, and Claridge. Claridge was, was funny as uh, <laughs> I was travelling with him, but I still speak to Stevie. He's, he's top, top man. And Parks. Just funny. He could go out with Parks and he's doing Klinsman in the nightclub <laughs> and all that. Who <laughs> 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 oh, <man. laughs> does that, you know? <laughs> Do you think? Do you think, Jamie, you you were a footballer in a great time to be a footballer pre social media? Mate, I say to people all the time, I don't, I don't regret that you know, I played played football. I said, men were men, and you you could have a bit of character, and you could have fun. Nowadays, everything's on social media. Uh, listen. I'll be probably back in jail if I if social media was that. <laughs> <laughs> shit I used to get up to, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, Matt, Matty Bond has just put on the screen, bit of a boy, weren't you, Jamie? But I don't think we want to get into too much of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You know what? You've got to be, haven't you? You only live once as well, haven't you? Hey, listen, it was uh, back in the day, it was great being a fan as well, because I, I certainly remember it, back in the late 90s, we used to watch a match and then we used to go out into town, into Leicester, and the players, you guys were out there having a beer and would have a and chat with us. Like. You know, that's what it should be like. That's, we felt we knew I'm... you players. Yeah, there's a, you could identify with the players, you know what I mean? I think that's gone a lot in the game now, which, to be fair, I feel sorry for some of the players as well, because... The spotlights are always on them, you know. At Bradford, I drink with the fans. Always drink with the fans. Uh, I do think that's an era that it, it won't happen again. It's gone now. But this fact yeah, that, yeah, you yeah. know, fans and players mixing, it, it has gone now. Yeah, it has gone. Um, just to finish off, Tom or Jamie <laughs> from the Fox's Arms, have you got any final questions? No, I've just seen one that Sean's just put on. Sean Culpin. Did he Sean's... have the same hairdresser? Did you have the same hairdresser as Jason Lee? 
says Sean. <laughs> I was a first. Hey, mine was a prison one as well, yeah? <laughs> oh, quality. That was going to be my question about the haircut as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Right, I think that is everybody. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Jamie Lawrence, thank you so, so much for joining us. It's been an absolute no pleasure to have you on. No problem. Leicester fans, see you later. Take care. Uh, cheers, Jamie. Thanks, mate. Oh, that's cheers, been- Jamie. I know you can't see me, but cheers. Absolutely stunning. Thanks, Jamie. We'll no let you go now. It's been a pleasure to have right. you on. No problem. We'll see Take you soon. Cheers, Thanks, out. mate. Bye, love. Thanks, mate. Well, Top Jamie. Man, good stories. It was, yeah. I think I think there's more to come from Jamie Lawrence, Jamie. I think we should. Oh, we could do a could do a full hour with him. I think we should have him on again. I think it might uh, be a, a, a nine o'clock showing though. That one. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. The X-rated Leicester fan TV. <laughs> if we were in there, uh, Jason Clare says he was uh, a top top bloke. Says Adam. Uh, Jason says top fella. He's obviously had his ups and downs guys, hasn't he, as a footballer in, in life, but it, he, he sounds happy now and uh, like if, you, if you work hard at it, you get somewhere, don't you? Sometimes you have to go down to the bottom level to start your way back up again and he's he's done it fantastically, isn't he? He's done really well out of it. Yeah, Tom. I thought Tom mem- was going to say something then. Yeah, I did, so we'll put you no, on the spot. Um, yeah, I was going to say, like I said to him earlier, you know, my, my memories of Vivi is it was me growing up as a kid, first following the football club as well, that kind of era, you know, the, the playoff final and Claridge, the League Cups. You know, that the one game like I said to him stood out was the hat-trick what Marshy scored in the first half against Derby and he's setting the first goal up. But generally, you know, I remember watching him play and thinking it was the raw pace, what, you know, you go, wow. But you didn't see many players with that kind of rawness. And he's right, he was raw. There wasn't any flashes of brilliance. It was get past the man, whip it in the box. And that's what made him special to the Leicester fans, you know, and, and the haircut was just the, the icing on the cake, really. Yeah. From... Yes. He was exciting origi- to watch. The original. Yeah, you know, if you look at the era now, you'd go with Lord Dyer. Nothing flash, but raw pace. And, it, you know, yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't see enough of those kind of players that they just did an instinct to run at a man and get it past him a yard and whip it into the box. There's always some kind of skill or... It's a it's a slow build up play. <laughs> yeah, Philip, <laughs> Philip Howard. We, <laughs> we've got a, somebody must have that. Somebody must have it. There's enough people watch this that uh, we need that Leicester City Christmas 1996 program with the photo with the players on it with Jamie Lawrence who slipped his uh, yeah John Thomas out. John Thomas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah if you find that do send us a picture of it um do you know what i used to collect programs like r- religiously yeah, I did. from about when i was five right through till like the early 90s and then when i used to go down there with my mates and stand in the cops and uh be drinking i sort of stopped buying the program so i don't think i'd have one from 96 because i would have been uh in my drinking days so if anybody has got it Let's absolutely um, get get it in there. Um, enjoyed that. Who's up for you yeah. and yeah, Thomas on Thursday? You and yeah, Robert. You that. and Thomas is the athlete. You and Thomas. You and Robert. You and Thomas. Yeah, definitely up for that one. You and Another Robert. Welshman. You got the right country. Yeah. You can ask a question this time, though, Jamie. Not my fault. You can hear me. I must have had his. It was just blanking you out, Jamie. That's all it was. I think so. <laughs> Probably didn't like me. Probably been nagging at him to make sure he gets on. <laughs> Daniel Daniel says he's going to go and look. Um, going to have a look in the loft later. Yeah, that's where all my old programmes are as well, in the same place. Uh, Andrew says it was good times. There were good times. The late 90s with these footballers, it was a different era. And you you just don't get it down with the players now anymore. They are multimillionaires. Oh. Even if they're on the reserves bench, they're multimillionaires. They don't mix with the fans. They drive around in their Lamborghinis, and there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, it's totally they different. Like we talked about last week, we did used to meet up with players in Brannigans and um, clubs like that, Crystals right. around Leicester. You know, they would chat with you at the bar. Tom won't know that because he's too no. young. But yeah. even on, but I used to go to Brannigans on a Saturday. I was going to say, I used to go out. Yeah. A little bit later right. than us, Phil. Yeah. A little bit, but, yeah, just a little bit. Jesus, give us a little bit of credit. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's enough of that cheek. Young Tom. Give me his... <laughs> yes, young Tom. 
Be young. Thanks, Tom, for joining us. We'll see you on Thursday. Well, as long as the baby doesn't come then, yeah, he's due within the next seven days. Oh, yes. uh, Seven days to go, but he might come early, he might come late. We'll see. And it's it's a boy? Yeah. The next one? George George Jacob, we've named him. George Jacob. Already named. Already named. I was going to set a competition, Tom, for the fans (laughs) to come up with the best name (laughs) for Tom Jr. But do you know what? If you can actually do that, who can come up with the best footballing name for him to come out let's see if we can get some good news in for next for Thursday night or next Monday what and do you, th- do you think your missus will let us name well, we, the baby we, we could, we, let's see if we can push it <laughs> I don't know what, Mid- what name the middle name's got to be Lester <laughs> yes L-E-S-T-A L-E-S-T-A a would be maybe perfect. a bit of a Casper a bit of a Vards something you know mm. yeah Ricardo how about that Ricardo Ricardo Moga. Lester Ricardo oh. That's Imagine going good. to school being called Ricardo. <laughs> That's it's got to be better than well, that'd be different, wouldn't it? That'd be or Tom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, Thanks, listen, mate. guys, I'm going to let you go. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, guys. Thanks, mate. See you later. Thanks, Tom. See you later. See you soon. See you Thursday. Thanks, Jamie. See you soon. So that's the guys. They've joined us mostly. Thanks, of course, to Jamie Lawrence for joining us. What a fantastic that was. We had Julian Watts last week. We've got Jamie Lawrence tonight and we've got you and you Roberts. I don't know where my brain is at tonight. It's all this holiday lockdown stuff. Thanks as ever to the sponsors to help us. Uh, They're all local businesses. Go and support them when you can, which is not very easy at the moment. Don't forget ADT are still running. They will go and fetch your shopping. They'll go and fetch your beer. They'll go and fetch anything for you. I know the guys at Pink as well. You can still look at the cars and lease one. So go and follow all those guys. But mostly, thanks for all your comments. tonight. I've tried to get as many on screen as possible. It's not always easy to do and get the keep the questions going with uh, a player. So I'll try and get as many on as ever. But mostly, thanks to you guys for watching this because without you guys... We don't have a show. Let me know which players you'd like us to get on next. We're trying to get on different ones to bring you a bit of a mix from different eras. And um, keep it Leicester Fan TV. Keep safe. Stay indoors. My name's Phil. This is Leicester Fan TV. We'll see you all very, very soon.